Oh, brother, is today. You might notice that today's episode is a little long. That's because it's a little great. It is an unbelievable episode. You have all the breaking Aaron Rodgers news, the implications for the Packers, that entire division mourning and weeping with tears and testosterone, plus a brand new segment that you will want to check out and find out, like, is are these rumors real? Is this worth getting excited about? Stay tuned. Make sure you uh, like this video uh, if you like it and subscribe. Uh, stay up to date on all of our content. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to crush, humiliate, and totally destroy your competition in your fantasy football draft. It's incredibly simple, so let me just break it down. Ultimate Draft Kit. The ultimate draft kit for the fantasy footballers is hands down the best fantasy tool in existence. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got sleepers, it's got busts, injury updates, full projections. This thing's even got full dynasty rankings. Don't overthink this. It's the only wingman you'll need this year. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and grab your copy right away. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo. Somebody's extra juiced over there. I wonder why. Dynasty, I, gave, I gave, it a little, trades. gave it a little extra there, didn't I? Tuesday, July 27th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers. Two incredibly savvy dynasty players and Jason. Oh, Take brother. that. Your trade sucks. Uh, wow, you didn't I, like that trade. I hate it. Can I ask you a question, Mike? Yes. Uh, since you're... One of the you yes. you are one of the two great dynasties. Yes. Okay. Do you have a championship? In that I league? don't. Do you have two no. championships in that league? I don't. Do oh. I? Mm, does Andy? Yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah that's like... why I said Andy's. He was saying we're the two. Right. Yeah. No. Nope. That was what I was saying. <laughs> no. Nope. Even Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. Every oh. once in a while, people did get he lucky. win two? He never won two though. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we have we have such a jam packed show today. Uh, there are rumors. They are. I have updated my rankings more in the last like 24 to 36 hours than I had in the, the previous week, just with so much news happening. Uh, training camp's about to start. Yep. And, uh, I mean, we're in it. It's go time. Five shows a week starting in August, coming okay. very, very soon. A week from today, so as excited. some say. Yeah. Um, so today we've got the NFC North, the final divisional breakdown, timing up. As well as it could with some information out of Green Bay and speculation, whatever you want to call it. We have news and rumors to talk about. We've got a new segment we're breaking out on the show today. I'm excited. And, and I just made a dynasty trade for Ezekiel yeah. Elliott. Yes, you did. Um, I'm welcoming Mark Andrews back home yeah. to the team that drafted him and made a mistake Full in letting him go, and uh, he'll, so he'll be coming back home. Is that what happened, the one that got away? The one that got away. It's like, I've got, <laughs> sometimes you've got to undo your mistakes, right? They let The Eagles let Frank Wright go, and they're like, man, we shouldn't have done that. Let's try to get someone from his staff back. And this was like, okay, I, I shouldn't have let Mark Andrews go. Andy got a title with Mark Andrews. I need, I need him back, so... Yeah. I uh, got. Well, I'm going to be taking a chance, throwing Noah Fan out there as my starting tight end next year. Yeah, yeah, but you've got now, um, and I hate that this is true. I yeah. hate it. Yeah, um, I'm very excited that this. But is But you have true. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, and Ezekiel Elliott all on the same roster now, I which know. sucks, and I apologize. Um, but for uh, since we're talking about it, yeah, you got the trade uh, was uh, Zeke and Fan for um, Robbie Anderson, Mark Andrews. Uh, Raheem, Oster. Raheem Oster and a first rounder and a first round pick and that completes my uh, since this is the Green Bay episode that completes my evacuation plans for Devonte Adams so I turned Devonte Adams into that group plus another first so two yeah. first rounders and uh, it's a little bit of a rebuild we will see I mean we've had teams in that league you guys know it playing dynasty out there where your starting roster we've had 
we've had people run out a better four pack of yeah. running backs in that league and have them finish dead last. So dynasty is tricky. Obviously, I gave up some depth in that trade. And and we don't trade with each other a lot. Like it feels like the first step of trading with one of you guys is breaking down the barrier of being on full guard and posturing. <laughs> like we should be able to have a normal conversation to trade with one another. Yeah, I mean, the reality is whenever there's a player I want and I go, oh, I want to make an offer for player X. And then I look up who's got player X. It's one of you two. I just go, oh, crap. Forget Never it. mind. I don't even make an <laughs> offer. It's Which really more, means you just want to take somebody for a ride. Yes, and more so. That's right. When you when you see that they're on my team, you go, "Oh, I'm going to have to overpay." Right, exactly. And I would like to not do that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Hey, check out the ultimate draft kit. You heard uh, our good friend at the top of the show talking about Todd. Todd. Todd Cruz. C R U Z E. I think that's pronounced Cruz. Cruz. Todd Cruz. Um, you can find that ultimatedraftkit.com, our community. If you're interested in getting in a great league with great people, uh, that is one of the many perks that you get at jointhefoot.com. So our community, we have forums. People uh, have connected for local and online leagues for years now, and you can join about 14,000 other fantasy football fanatics. And very proud of that community and the people uh, they're in. Thefantasyfootballers.com for the rankings and the profiles. I think it's time to break out yeah. a brand oh, yeah. new segment. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. I'm mm. so excited about Delicious. this. Delicious. So excited. Jason was the feature there on the drop if you were watching it. But, uh, yeah, where there's smoke, there's fire. The rumor mill, the stories out of camp. All of the speculation in the fantasy football world. We're going to take a little look at a few stories each week and basically answer the question Is this just smoke or right. is this fire? Um, first one, a big story. The Athletic is reporting uh, that last year, with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup already on the roster, the Cowboys felt like the best way to throw C.D. Lamb into the offense was lining him up in the slot. And that's what they did. He was primarily a slot receiver last year. But they say now the plan is to move CeeDee Lamb into multiple spots on the offense. Now the quote, those days appear to be done. The, the slot days. Yes. Yeah. The, as in, I mean, we've talked about this. My, my biggest, uh, not complaint is the wrong word, but just the, like the, my biggest knock for projecting CeeDee Lamb moving forward was the fact that he was 100% a slot wide receiver and it's just it's difficult to be a true difference maker a real breakout star when that's the only place that you're lining up not that you can't right but the odds are against you compared to the the outside receivers or guys that are moving all around and that was, it was like that's holding me back we've never questioned the talent of CD Lamb of like he's a he's a sensational prospect and proved last year he's ready to play with the big boys. But what are they going to do? Like, is it because Gallup is going to be on the outside? But boom, here we have this news. And this, the, I, I am buying the fire here of we all made a very seismic change in our rankings. On top of uh, that, you have Amari Cooper not ready for training camp, word on the street, but the, the street being uh, Jerry Jones. Yes. Of course. Yes. Uh, He's out it's of the street. a gold-plated street. He's a beat reporter. Yes. And he said he thinks that Amari Cooper will be back after the, I think it's the August 13th, whatever. It's preseason game. They're yeah. playing the Cardinals. And that is, that's a lot of training camp that somebody else can come in and become Dak's fan. And, and Dak it hasn't gotten to really play with Lamb very much. This is a lot of time for Lamb to establish is, that relationship. And this story also said, that Lamb has been by far the most impressive player in the camp thus far. Yeah, I mean, I, I told you guys recently that I've just been changing my opinion here with how I have Cooper and Lamb statted, and this is new information that just amplifies that. Um, there aren't a lot of players that have the physical ability to be a top five wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb has that ability, and in, in an offense that could throw for 5,000 yards. Right. And so those two things make it very interesting to me because sometimes the best 
you know, the talent finds its way. Like I was still leaning towards raising CD Lamb in my rankings just with the way things were trending, even if he was in the slot. Hearing this news, multiple spots, mismatches, he makes plays that other receivers can't. He can, he makes plays that I don't think Amari Cooper can make. No way. No way can Amari. I mean, like, I love Amari Cooper. I've been Mr. You have. Uh, I've been hanging with Mr. Coop. Um, but the reality is CD Lamb is is a superstar, and Amari Cooper is a very good. He's a Roddy White to the Julio. Exactly. That's a that's a great comp when it not not necessarily in the physicalities of each player, but a, a great situational comp here because um, Amari Cooper is special. I mean, you saw that in his rookie year; he was unbelievable out of the slot. So this one, yeah, I'm I'm hot and bothered here. Fire! Um, then. We're going fire. Fire for sure. We're taking it up. Oh, fi we it's were 500 degrees. We're, it's full. You know, it's going to have a sear. Yes. All right. So we're in on that. And you can see, I mean, I have CeeDee Lamb ahead of Amari Cooper. Not by a lot, but um, both of them inside the top 20. All right. Assistant coach Deuce Staley made it sound like DeAndre Swift's role could significantly grow in 2021, saying that you want your star and three down back to have 25 touches per game that's a lot of that's a lot Oof. of smoke with big time fantasy football implications. I think that is what it is. Just smoke. <laughs> it's a lot of smoke. <laughs> um, look, the, the, he's he's their best offensive player. He will be very involved. He'll be involved in the passing game, but he is going to be splitting time with Jamal Williams. And if you just talk about the amount of smoke that has come out of Detroit this off season about both Jamal Williams and uh, you know DeAndre Swift it's just pick pick the day of the week who are they talking up who's the 1A who's the primary back who you know they who's got the hot hand it's just like they have to report things and and they talk to these coaches and they're like oh he's great i don't think for one second that this team would be good enough to allow a running back to get 25 touches a game you have to you have to end up winning games to run the clock out and hand the ball off that much. It's just not going to happen. Uh, okay, so I guess devil's advocate for me would be whether they're – I mean, 425 touches on the year, uh, I don't think that's happening for DeAndre Swift. You have to ask two questions, though. One is, like, if he had a bunch, what would that mean, being on a Detroit team that we're going to talk about today? I mean, here's a spoiler alert. It's not a high win total out of Vegas. <laughs> The other devil's advocate point is like you look at last year and they lost a lot of games and he didn't touch the ball a ton, but was still very fantasy relevant for a big stretch of the season. Very That's efficient all, and surprising amount of, of touchdowns. Lots of touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but there could be some sparks in there is all I'm saying. Like there could be some embers coming up that I hope I'm not missing out on. So some pellets are heating up. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, I, I've got him as my running back fourteen. The auger I, is working. I, I think. I think he's. I. I. I do think he's going to be good. Where do you have him? Uh, running back fourteen right now. Um, I think he'll be involved. Yeah, but, but you're not buying twenty five. I'm not buying twenty five touches. That's just. It's not in the even possible range of outcomes for him. I have him at sixteen, and it's so strange. Like DeAndre Swift is such a a tough player because he. He is great. He absolutely is great. And we saw it last year. He was over-efficient with the work he was given. But are you ex like, are you excited at all? When when DeAndre Swift falls to you, you're like, okay, here it is, my RB2, grabbing DeAndre Swift. I have not once in a mock draft or anywhere, any of the drafts I've done over the offseason, have I gotten DeAndre Swift on my team and was like, Boom! I that was I would that be was excited it. with him as my two. Oh, I'm not, and I totally understand he what Mike's should, saying because no, that's a high two. I, I have him. I have him sandwiched, literally right in between. So one spot I had him is Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I'm super excited for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Then I have DeAndre Swift, not excited, and then after him, I've got Najee Harris. Oh yeah, yeah. let's have fun, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I, I think it's just the it, honestly, it's just the stink of the Lions. That's all it is. Um, they haven't proven to have a great running back since Barry Sanders. We all know that. Even when they've had good running backs, you know, Amir Abdullah was talented, but it just couldn't work out. Um, oh, we've what gone through the ringer with on Johnson, and I do think we DeAndre, <laughs> we as a show, we as a show. Yeah, <laughs> guilty by association over there. No, you <laughs> loved carry on, and I'm, you know it. Oh, I. Yeah. Oh, you. 
the don't go check the tape. Um, but yeah, Swift is the most For talented, but sake. this is mostly uh, more smoke, smoke than fire. Okay. Uh, that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by Traeger Grills. You can get that amazing, pure, wood-fired flavor when you cook anything on Traeger Grills. Mm. And uh, with Wi-Fi, you can grill from anywhere using the Traeger app. You can get it all set up. Use your Wi-Fi phone. It is the yeah. best. Oh, what is my meat at? Oh, perfect temperature? Yeah. Let me go get it. I will admit I grilled many a time while watching Monday Night Football yep. this past year. All right, visit Traeger dot com slash footballers for more info news time news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper well 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 what are you referring to mike the the green bay situation okay what well, this is hard we end up i'm in not the- looking at the show doc no i know the there's news breaking live while we're recording this show, 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, the the day before it's released, about Aaron Rodgers. Now, today's the NFC North show, so every bit of information coming out is valuable to us right now. We have timed up some incredible things with this show. Yeah, because we could have recorded this morning, Yeah, but we were hungry, <laughs> so we got food instead. <laughs> and that really benefit. Once again, food pays off. We did it. Um. But I, I kind of want to transition into the divisional breakdown with this news. So let me just let me blitz some other headlines okay. so people know All what's right. going on, and we'll get right into the divisional breakdown. Uh, the Texans acquired Anthony Miller from the Bears. Anthony Miller, wide receiver, was you know a high pick, a second round pick, showed potential at times, but was not long for Chicago. Um, Texans have accumulated players this offseason. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bears more on the show today. I love Darnell Mooney. The opportunity is clear for him, but we'll pause it there. Deshaun Watson reported for training camp, still wants to be traded. They are now listening for offer, listening yeah, yeah. to offers for Deshaun Watson. They're asking for three first-round picks or more. Or more? <laughs> Wait, what? If you'd like to pay more. We only want three, but... We will accept four or five. That's like our dynasty trade just now where you're like, if you'd like to also include James Robinson, I would take him. Yeah. And I was like, no, thanks. I mean, but you could have. I left the the gate wide open for you. Um, Look, Deshaun Watson's not in our projections right now. Right. Because we don't know where he'll be and we don't know for how long. The NFL is going to have to rule in some capacity on eligibility. Yeah. we They're looming over Deshaun Watson. I mean, one, the this whole thing that he – Hasn't wanted to be in Houston, and then you have the twenty-two uh, 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 accusations in civil court yes. of of uh, sexual misconduct. So that is part of the deal for if if a team wants to trade for him. So this is far from over. What's going on with Watson at this point in time? I've thought he will play some this year, but it looks like a trade would have to happen. Then you're going to be waiting for a suspension. So we'll react as the NFL gives us information. D.D. Westbrook signed with the Vikings. So, yay! Mediocre signing of the week. Mike, would you have been happy if D.D. had, uh, well, I guess there's no situation. Where Done he's... something years ago? Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right. We'll leave it there. Uh, there's also a report out of Jets camp that they'll use an RB by committee approach, but keep an eye on Michael Carter as the eventual 1A in that group. Yep. I think that's how we all have seen it this this offseason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, Joe Burrow cleared for training camp. That's big news. That's great news. He's he's participating in 11-on-11s. 11 um, he's not going to be thrown out there. You probably won't see him in the preseason. I'm guessing his first action against an enemy will be in week one. <laughs> okay. Against an enemy? Well, someone that's going to really tackle him and go for it. You know, I'm sure that his own team is probably not crushing him at the knees right now. Dak Prescott practicing in full. A.J. Brown cleared to start training camp. And Beckham feels great. Uh, don't know when he'll be a full go, but I think he'll be recovering oh, in time for the start of camp. feels great. I just can't play football right now, but feeling good. All right. There is so much more to talk about with Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers, but they're the first team we're talking about in the divisional breakdown. So we'll get there momentarily. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Switch to uh, the Sleeper platform. They're the fastest growing platform out there. 
And before we talk Packers, I want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. They are a virtual private network. Everyone needs to have the ability to turn on a VPN in important situations. You can put it on your computers, your tablets, your phones. It'll protect your data, make sure it's encrypted, what you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is you're doing, it's protected. You know that you can have uh, confidence in what you're doing. If you're on a, a free public Wi-Fi, you're protected. And right now, it's 65% off. It's just $3.49 a month or $31.49 for the year. You get an anonymous IP address. You uh, you uh, address. Cir- address. <laughs> you circumvent online censorship. And they've got great support. Very, very highly rated. Um, and again, they have plans starting at just $31.49 a year. So this is the time to sign up. With our discount and their promotional offerings, you can get it for 65% off. They are the best of the best, rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot. That is with more than 6,000 reviews. Show them some love. They've sponsored us for a long time. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online today. Let's get divisional. Now we can talk about it. The NFC North breakdown begins with the Packers, 13-3. and three. This is our final divisional breakdown show. We've been through each and every division in football. Been on the way through the NFC. Been excited to get here. Intentionally d- delayed this <laughs> d- division because we knew that we needed to know more information, and now we have more. A um, couple days ago, because this is how the world works now, Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers both both go post the same la- NBA last dance mm-hmm. Instagram story of Pippen and Michael Jordan. And so my initial response to that, everybody thought, okay, there were reports that Aaron Rodgers might retire. The sports books have changed the win total for Green Bay. Well, they had pulled it. They completely. pulled it, yeah, and, and it's been changed. You'll hear the win total I have now for Green Bay is 8.5. It oh, was ten and a half all summer. There's no way that it's at that. So it's yeah, probably nowhere right now, and if, it will be back. At, if you got, if, if you, you got get eight that, and a half, congratulations. Yeah. But uh, so my initial reaction was, hey, one more year. That's what it meant to me. Yeah. One more year for Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams has uh, made the news recently. They had negotiated towards a long term deal. They didn't reach one, which means this is his last deal our last year on his deal. So just drama galore for Green Bay. But just now, or actually a few moments ago, we received an update that the Packers are close to finalizing a one-year deal, essentially. A renegotiation with Aaron Rodgers that would free him from the Packers after this season, which is one of the things, like earlier this morning in the the studio, I was saying, hey, what are the odds that these two guys go somewhere together next year? Right. And pair up again. I hope it's high because take their talents to South Beach. Yeah, I mean that right, that that would that would be great because that means he probably wouldn't go to the Broncos, and you would have no offense. Well, with, Adams because uh, Devonte Adams is on the on the last year <laughs> of his uh, contract. He can be franchised though. That's so, fair. So the team still has control if they want it. And if you're just hearing this news now, the uh, the contract. Um, for next year would be voided for Rodgers. They wouldn't be allowed to tag him. So they would be negotiating towards just bringing him back for this one year. So uh, that's the news we have right now. I I think we had all pretty much statted our Packers towards the return of Aaron Rodgers because that's the most valuable information for you out there. But I think at this point we can assume it feels yeah, locked in. They're we, bringing we, him back. We, we had primarily statted him that way, but I, I know that I nerfed a little bit of my Aaron Jones ranking because when you're at the beginning of the first round, the second round, if you had been doing drafts, there was obvious risk with Aaron Jones, uh, um, you know, to, to spend sure. that kind of capital. Now I'm confident in him. Um, this whole Packers offense, I mean, it, it, it's fantastic to have this news now. Obviously, training camp is starting for the Packers and they're going to be able to you know have that last dance and I think the expectation now needs to be uh, Aaron Rodgers trying to win a Super Bowl in Green Bay is going to scorch the earth he's going to do whatever he wants I don't think he cares one iota what the people above him are going to tell him to do he's going to go out there and play how he wants throw the ball when he wants to throw it and uh, just try to put up stats and win games 
Yeah, and I mean, last year, who's the MVP? They were number one in points per game in football after they passed on drafting him a weapon. So is that a counterpoint that they bring up to him? Like, you scored more points than everybody in football without us doing that? Yeah, and then he says, you drafted players that sat on the bench. Yeah, and and the truth is they were amazing. He was amazing last year. Number one in passing touchdowns. Um, Hyper-efficient, but that's what Aaron Rodgers does. Yep dominant in this division. They're 11 and 1 against NFC North rivals in the last 2 years. Is that true? Yeah. 11 and 1. 11 and 1. Oh man, could you imagine the other 3 teams fan bases right now? They had the glimmer of hope. They're like, yeah. How are you doing knowing that you moved, you tried to be proactive and get max value for DeVonte Adams and you traded him to Brooks in our dynasty league. Yes. Now Brooks, you might have are you excited about this news? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's oh, as excited as he gets. Yeah, um, I, no, I'm fine with it. I think the value was there. Um, obviously, he's he's going to be playing here one year, and unless he's, fr I mean, I don't even know if it's better for him to be franchised or to move on, because if he's franchised, for Adams. yeah, for Adams, then he's playing with Jordan watch, Love. Watch him trade for Watson. <laughs> oh. oh man, because <laughs> they'll be gone all year. So, Jason, with your Aaron Jones uh, projection adjustment, do you have? Him ahead of Saquon Barkley. I have him right behind Saquon okay. Barkley. They're next to each other, running back six and running back seven, respectively. All right, so Rodgers, do we expect him to repeat what he did last year? Because right now, obviously, his ADP is nerfed. It will change. Um, he is the quarterback eight right now, but that is going to change with him securing this deal. I mean, 12 games of three or more passing touchdowns last season. It's not like we haven't seen explosions like this from him before. It reminds me of Peyton Manning, right, where right. you had some years where he was hyper-efficient, big numbers. You had some years where it was a little bit lower. I, it will come down, but uh, when I say I – mean, there's a few reasons. You have – this was the best touchdown rate of Aaron Rodgers' career. He had hit the 9% mark really his his uh, back in 2011 – but 9.1, 9.1% of his attempts turned into a passing touchdown. That is absurd. When you look at it historically, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but essentially when, when someone has uh, enough passing volume and they hit that type of a mark, you can expect that to regress by at least 2%. Now, which is a huge amount of touchdowns. Yes, You're going a huge to amount. lose a lot. But that, would, that still keeps him in that seven range, which Aaron Rodgers can easily hit that threshold. So... Yeah, he's still going to be solid for for fantasy football, but that natural regression coming off of an MVP year combined with the the natural regression for passing touchdowns across the league because of how many we saw last year with the uh, the shortened off season. So yeah, things are going to come down, but Aaron Rodgers is, is still a should still be a top option for fantasy football. And if you were able to buy that dip in drafts, I was watching a uh, uh, some friends do a best ball draft. And there we're in, we're in the double digit rounds. Yeah. And there's Aaron Rodgers just hanging out. It, it, it's absurd uh, to see where he was going. I mean, I, I get it. Like people were freaked out that he wasn't going to be there or retire. But if you got it early, congratulations. His For an example, 8.6% is what Mahomes had during his 50 touchdown year. He dropped to 5.4, then 6.5. 6.5 put him at 38 touchdowns after. A, so, you know, just giving you a perspective sure. on. That kind of a change, Jason. You were saying something? Yeah, for sure. I, I was looking at the last eight years of Aaron Rodgers. While he's been one of the best in the league, the, in his prime, he has averaged 5.9% uh, of his passing attempts as a touchdown. So to be up at nine is very, very high. It, that would that would have been 32 touchdowns last year based on his passing volume if he were to throw what his right. average, which his average is way above, you know, NFL average is around four and a half. He's 5.9. So... Yeah, I mean, you, you expect uh, Tunyon to not have as many touchdowns, Adams and Aaron Jones to not have as many receiving touchdowns necessarily. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are the new backfield. Jamal Williams is gone. We'll talk about him later in the show when we get to the Lions. But A.J. Dillon, uh, week 16 last year, went 21 for 124 and two. A kind of a little taste of what Ugh. his quadriceps are capable of. Oh, what could have been for so, my dynasty team? Oh, with Aaron Jones potentially yeah. leaving. Yeah. You know what? I think you're okay. 
I, think I know. You're okay, you still you'll get to play AJ Dillon this year. I believe that. I do too. Uh, but what? Here's the question I have about AJ Dillon, and there was um, there was some news earlier regarding AJ Dillon that I didn't bring up in our where there's smoke, there's Essentially, fire. Essentially, they're just saying they're going to get they they want AJ Dillon more involved, and it's inferring that they want AJ Dillon more involved than Jamal Williams was last year. So when let, Aaron Jones was healthy, because they're different. Because Jamal Williams was involved in the passing game. Yeah. My question to you guys is, what does a great A.J. Dillon season look like on on the stat side? What is uh, a great year for him? Uh, I, I would say a great fantasy season for him would be that he becomes the goal line guy and ends up with 8, 9, 10 touchdowns, which um, is really the crux here because I don't think they're going to utilize him as a pass, catch, pass catching specialist the way that Jamal Williams was used. Um, so you're talking about maybe he gets – 200 carries um, or close to that, a good amount of yards. And it's really about the touchdowns to me. And the nice thing here is I would so much rather have a situation like this year than last year, where this year you could encroach on the goal line opportunities with the quads in A.J. Dillon, but that opens up more passing work for Aaron Jones, where he is truly electric. I think Alvin Kamara-esque in the sense of he doesn't get as many rushing attempts, but his his passing volume is where his fantasy points really come from. So I think both players could have a very solid fantasy output this season. I think it – does it threaten Aaron Jones? Because he has been such a high touchdown player. If I mean, Dylan's the goal line back, then yes. Because 16 touchdowns on the ground for Jones in his number two finish, nine last year. Um, you're right. I mean, he's a very valuable pass catching weapon, but it does seem like the team doesn't want him on the field all the time. I guess, what did you do with Aaron Jones with the news that Jamal was leaving and with AJ Dillon's resurgence? So, uh, like I mentioned, his passing work went up, his touchdowns came down. I have him with uh, 80 targets this season, which would be up from his 63 last year. Uh, but his rushing uh, touchdowns down and, and those going more to A.J. Dillon. I've got A.J. Dillon with seven rushing touchdowns. If you believe that the touchdown percentage for Rodgers is going to change just based on you know how anomalous that is, then you still believe they're a great offense. You still believe that you know, like two years ago, maybe you do have 15, 16, 17 rushing touchdowns open to be grabbed by both players. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, but it, it is important to note that when we talk about all this, uh, you know, touchdown throwing percentage, it's not that all those touchdowns are going to be run in. That team as a whole was just exceptionally efficient in scoring. I, I think that the Green Bay Packers will still be a good offense, but they're going to score fewer touchdowns in, in 2021 than they did last year. What do we do with the wide receiver room outside of Devontae Adams? Is he, I mean, he's firmly atop your list now. Oh yeah. yeah, he's he's my number one wide receiver. He's too targeted, too great at the in the red zone and at the goal line. Um, he should be everyone's number one wide receiver, in my opinion. I I, I love Tyreek Hill. You know, Hopkins is great, Diggs, but Adams. Now that you know Aaron Rodgers is there, I I can't make a, an honest argument for him to not be number one. As far as the rest of the wide receiver group, there isn't one. There isn't a rest of the. There is. There's one wide receiver on this team. It's Devontae Adams. <laughs> Mike, is there any value anywhere else for Aaron Rodgers? If if there is like a really late round flyer, if you want to take it on on Alan Lazard, I am okay with it. Those the first three weeks of last year, uh, I mean, he was a top fourteen wide receiver in two of those three games. Then he got hurt. So if there, I'm I'm more with on Jason's side that it's. It's Adams and then the occasional touchdown to Robert Tunyon. But if there's value to another wide receiver, look, I, people are excited for Amari Rodgers, their new uh, the rookie wide receiver they took in the third round, I believe. But to me, if it's any of them that has value on a consistent basis, it would I'd still bet on Lazard. You guys will find this interesting because Jason just brought up like you're not necessarily going to see the running backs score more touchdowns. This will back up what you're saying. Two years ago when, when Aaron Jones had the big touchdown year, they had 18 total rushing touchdowns. Last year, they had 16 total rushing touchdowns as a team. Their passing touchdowns, the re or receiving, I should say, went from 26 two years ago to 48. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's pretty incredible to go 
more than double or basically almost doubled. Yeah, truly almost an insane number and and the reality is part of that is because when you, when they got on the goal line they were as good at uh, a Devonte adams touchdown as they were as rushing a touchdown in which is abnormal robert tunyon right now being drafted as the tight end 11 with the aaron Rodgers doubt will that go up and is it worthwhile because to me he is the biggest like he was just too efficient catching touchdowns last year for the total volume that I'm afraid he's going to be a wasted pick that people feel committed to, right? You take that tight end in the middle rounds. Let's say he goes in the sixth round then when no. all said and done. I would not. You would be feel interested. committed to Tanya. Yeah, I don't middle round eleven tight ends, touchdowns last year. Middle round tight ends, they don't work out. I uh, and I know that like that's a point for Jason's of uh, of avoid Kyle Pitts, but for Robert Tunyon, in the ninth round, great. I mean, if you're going for, if you're going to punt the position, you're going after a, a, a tight end. You want them associated with a quarterback who's going to throw a, a large amount of touchdowns. This was my uh, my my point in favor of Gerald Everett. Like, if you want to go with him at the end of the draft. So as long as Robert Tunyon stays eight, nine, maybe in the back of the seventh, I'm okay with it. But I would not take him in the sixth round. Okay. Shall we move on? Anything else with the Packers you want to discuss? No, I think we've exhausted it. Is Devin Funch is still on that roster? I think so. Can we get a can, Brooks? Can you please vet that? This is very, very important. Yeah, very important. One I, second. I, I'm not sure I have the ability to even hit that drop, mm. but we need to really. Is Devin asked scrumptious. If he's if he's on that roster, we need to really. You need to tell me if he's on the roster. What do you got for me? <laughs> hit it. <laughs> oh. It's been <laughs> too long. It's great. It's good to have him back. Last time we did that, he got hurt again. So hopefully we can avoid it. The Bears we called him Devin S. Scrumptious. Yeah, that was you, we're, wasn't it? I, we all. I'm sure. Of course, it was you. Yeah, I mean, it Mr. started Von as Bunches. Von Bunches, Bunches. I don't know. We're a weird show, man. I think that won nickname of the year that year too. Are we, are we? When we look back at how stupid it is, does that mean we're growing up? Nah. No, I mean, I'm just highlighting. Darn hell, Anderson. <laughs> I still love it. Okay. All right. The Bears were 8-8 eight and eight last year. Trabust key season is over. Oh, man. And uh, they only had one win versus a team with a winning record. Managed to beat Tampa Bay last year on Thursday night. It's, uh, it's a new quarterback room in Chicago. And they welcome in Andy Dalton. Oh, they drafted Justin Burley Fields. Burley Dalton. Oh, with the beard? Oh, man. I was Upgrade. Wasn't I Andy Dalton for Halloween last year? Yeah. Or and you had to shave your face. That was two years ago. Last year, I was Cliff Kingsbury. That is. But yeah, I had to shave my face, and now I could have just dyed the beard red. He's looking good. It, it's very red. It's a red <laughs> beard. Um, It'll probably help. I mean, you're in Chicago now. It's cold. Yeah. Right? Like It wasn't cold in Cincinnati. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, the Bears didn't score more than 30 points a in a game until week 14. Um, I would say that they were kind of a gritty bunch last year. They battled their way to 8-8 eight and eight despite all the problems at quarterback. They figured it out on the ground towards the end of the year. Say what you will about the matchups they had. Lots of people have great matchups, that do, sure. and they do nothing against them. David Montgomery strung together um, eight touchdowns in a five-week span as the running back, too. And then we don't know what the Andy Dalton, Justin Fields process is going to be. Um, I have some Bears fan friends, uh, said that awkwardly, uh, that think, you know, remember what happened when Trubisky was drafted? Didn't we go into the year with Mike Glennon? It's going to uh, be, the, yeah. remember they paid him to be the starter and it was mm -hmm. like one game later or two games later they had made the transition. So best laid plans, um, they fall apart under the weight of losses. I have Andy Dalton down for two games. I do think he starts the season. I think they pull the plug quickly and will make the transition to fields. But that, I mean, there is, while I believe that, there is very little um, other than looking at the history of this coaching staff and trying to project how good each player will be. Outside of those, you know, pieces of the hypothesis, it's mostly a guess. And you, so the reality is when you're when you're betting on Bears right now, you have to just say, we don't know who the quarterback is. The range of outcomes are either an Andy Dalton who's not great, 
Which or, he was not last year. Exactly. I mean, nobody, you know, we, the the Dak to Dalton was a huge, huge difference um, for the Cowboys. Uh, or you've got a rookie quarterback, even if you love Justin Fields, which I think all three of us do. Yeah. A rookie quarterback is not the best for the passing game. So um, I, I think the – It's it's interesting because we, we've been going into the year projecting this team with trash at quarterback every year. Yeah. So it's not like we're really working from a different – Worst position, necessarily. Can't wait for next year. There's actually some upside and some potential. They start the season, and it looks like it has two and two written all over it. In Los Angeles, taking on the Rams, at home against Cincinnati, on the road against Cleveland, at home against Detroit. I think Justin Fields... I think it'll be a little while. I was going to say the exact opposite. Week two. We, it's week two or week four, Justin Fields will be starting. Okay. That's, that's I, be I am projection. not there. I'm not there Sacrifice yet. Sacrifice like, Dalton in week I mean, one. It's if Andy Dalton had shown anything last year, he would have been paid to be a starting quarterback this year. Yeah, it would have been a lot easier for him to find a job. Number one, and it's like digging into what's going on with Matt Nagy. I mean, how is he not on a hot seat here? For he probably like, is getting close. Like coaches have to deliver, and you didn't deliver with you with, with your other rookie. I mean. I I just I feel like this team has a better better so, future if you're getting to Justin Fields sooner than later. I I don't feel like Andy Dalton is going to game manage this team into wins. His quote, because let's go not just on what we're feeling here, because sure. obviously you got to read the situation. Each of us do. His quote on June fifteenth was this, and the headlines were different than Who the, is the quote. He? Sorry, Matt Nagy, head okay. coach of the Bears. He said, no, Andy is our starter. He said again, but he did say this. He said, again, I can't predict anything. You know how it goes. There's so many things that can happen between today and that week one, but Andy is our starter and Justin is our number two, and we're going to stick to that plan. So it sounds somewhat hilarious because it's like, we're going to stick to the plan, and the plan is that anything can happen. Mm -hmm. When your plan was you went out and you recruited Andy Dalton and you said, sign with us because you will be our starting quarterback, yeah, I mean, you you did that because you were not expecting his, other his, teams to pass on Justin Fields. And, and, like, how do you sign him? I mean, I get it. This is just, like, speaking as a human being, as a man, how do you tell this guy you're going to be our starting quarterback and, like, a week later you draft his replacement and you're like, Ugh, well. This quote is yeah, great. you're he still says, starting for us, okay. He says, promises, as we all know, can get pretty crazy. <laughs> Oh, I mean, we know it. Promises are insane. Oh, they're the, wild where's now? Where's the cards? Where's the cards? Oh. He, he said promises. <laughs> he said promises can get kind of crazy, but we t what we told Andy is that he's our starter and he knows that, and that's what Justin knows. <laughs> promises get crazy, but listen to this, guys. Listen, listen. <laughs> we told him he was the starter. <laughs> is that how you – imagine the conversation with your kids. Now, son, daughter, promises can get kind of crazy these days. But I love you. Okay, I'm with Mike now. By week four, <laughs> Justin Fields should start. But there, that still doesn't guarantee Look, something I know, special. I know Dad said he was buying a pony for career. Promise the pony. <laughs> Promises get crazy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they did add Damian Williams to the backfield. There was news recently. The knee, Tariq Cohen's knee is not okay. Right. Uh, like recently, stiffness started on the pup. The, he's not going to contribute this year. I, I, there's just no way. He's he's too old. He's too pedestrian. They want David Montgomery to be the starter, and he's going to be. Yeah, T T Tariq Cohen is is nothing. Um, and for for fantasy purposes, I I had a friend uh hit me up, text me. They were asking for advice on a dynasty trade, and they were excited that they were going to get Tariq Cohen thrown in oh, no. on a deal. I'm like, dude, no, don't. Don't even bother. Don't like go get someone else. I feel like if you try to drag and drop Tariq Cohen onto a dynasty roster, it vapor it just disappears when you do that. Um, but Allen Robinson, back to back top twelve finishes despite bad quarterback play, he is solid. That is mm -hmm. the best way to talk about Robinson. The odds of him being prolific in a new way, I don't think they exist this year with the combination of Dalton and rookie quarterback. He's not going to win you the week, right? But he will. Probably be, you know, you talked about having, you were talking about DeAndre Swift as your RB2. What about Allen Robinson as your wide receiver, too? 
Oh, I, that That's, is a fantastic yeah. thing because uh, you, you've got a little bit more volume and upside. Like, I like Robert Woods as my number two, and Robert Woods does not have quite the volume and the market like share Robinson more. that Allen Robinson has. Allen Robinson's great. I mean, he's as close to locked in to RB, or wide receiver 12 as possible. Finished as wide receiver 12 last year, the wide receiver 11 the year before. I don't think he has top five upside, but I don't think he can fall much past – you know, wide receiver 15. He's just kind of this safe guy who, if he gets 150 targets, he's good for fantasy, and he gets 150 targets. I want to talk about Darnell Mooney, who is one of my favorite up-and-coming young players in the league, although I am worried that we may be one year away yeah. from having Justin Fields solidify the spot and then provide a lot of upside for Mooney. But with Anthony Miller departing, you know, he was fifth among rookies last year with target share, despite the bad quarterback play. Remember, how many plays was Darnell Mooney open deep and the ball landed oh, man. catastrophically far away? Just have a real quick search on Twitter. You'll find a, a good highlight package. Here, here's some really interesting data for you. If you look at every wide receiver over the last decade that saw 95-plus targets as a rookie, which is what he saw, 90% of those players had at least one top 36 season in their future. More, more, uh, the majority, 76%, had at least one top 24 season. So everything I saw in film from Darnell Mooney told me he has a bright future in this league. I just don't know if it means anything this year. Yeah, like, uh, Darnell Mooney, I, uh, there was like, you know, just the whispers out of Chicago, of course, and this is all rumor mill, but it's like the drafting of Darnell Mooney, people have said that kind of, saved Ryan Pace's job the the GM of Chicago that he hit on such a late round fifth round pick late round wide receiver yeah and so you didn't really see a ton of big games from him last year five for 69 four for 49 and a touchdown uh, he did in the year final week 11 catches for Darnell Mooney inflating some of those season-long numbers but he will have an opportunity yeah and those those target numbers that you mentioned they are sticky with those wide receivers as far as the correlation to their future success because targets are a talent stat. Yeah, you, Targets are earned. Targets are something where it's like it's not just uh, you're the only wide receiver in town. You you got open and you gained the trust. So Does that I, explain John Ross's lack of talents at the NFL level? Uh, right. it, Sorry, not talents. Targets. <laughs> targets. I, mean, I should have said lack of talent. Oh, it's my talent God. Talent share. How many synonymous. talents does he have? Um, Not many talents. Yeah, so um, I I would uh, I would say Mooney is a very nice dynasty target right now because even if this isn't the season, you know, it, it, assuming Justin Fields takes over at some point, the halfway point or whatever. The rookie Justin Fields or this current version of Andy Dalton, I'm not excited about right. them supporting a, a wide receiver too. But going forward, he projects to be a really solid wide receiver too, and. Uh, Allen Robinson is actually a, you know, he's a franchise he's a, yeah. tag guy. He could be gone, and Mooney could become a one here, and he showed enough on the field. So I, I like targeting Mooney quite a bit. So year three, he could go to the Mooney? Ooh. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Little, right. little, little. On the little nose. A cor little corny. <laughs> but that's <laughs> okay. that's on brand. Jimmy, Grandpa, Cole come at the tight end room. Uh, also now Jesse James. <sighs> Just stay away. Stay away from all of them. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, that's what you should do. Cole Komet, yeah, we're all excited. No, no, just stay away from the room. Jimmy Grandpa did not retire. No, he he did and not. He ended last season with a one-handed amazing touchdown catch. He is annoying in the red zone. He had eight of them He last caught as year. many touchdowns as Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, Kenny Galladay combined <laughs> in 2020. Oh, come on. <laughs> Which is the stat he would read you if he heard you making fun of him. Uh uh, all right. What do you think the win total is for Chicago? Give me I your guess. Those, stupid those stats, stats are great. Two guys who essentially missed the entire year. I'm just going to throw their names. <laughs> One guy who stat. didn't catch any touchdowns. Uh, uh, what was your question, Andy? Uh, win oh. total. What do you think Vegas has the win total Ooh. at for Chicago? I would say you're going to be a oof, nine. I'd say Ooh. above 500. I'm going under than that. I'm going under than that. <laughs> I'm going lower. Uh, I'll go. I'll put him right at eight. Seven point five. Ooh, that's get, because get bodied. I'll give you a hint. This next team has a higher win total. The Vikings. Yeah. Last year, seven and nine started out one in five, finished six and four. They were six and five in one score games. Eleventh in points per game as a team. 
They lived in the red zone. Third, third most red zone plays per game of any team, which is great for Dalvin Cook, fantasy managers and fantasy production. Uh, guess their win total before we get into the discussion for I'm Minnesota. I'll go nine. I'll go nine and a half. It's nine. Dang it's it. It's nine. It's nine. Um, which you imagine Green Bay will be back up at ten and a half. I would imagine, yeah. So uh, Vikings coming in at number two in the division. Very efficient last year. You know, Kirk Cousins is such a difficult player to talk about. Sometimes I feel like we waste people's time talking about him because I don't know if you should ever play him. Uh, he is a streamable quarterback. I'll put it there. But that's it. I mean, week 10 on, he was the quarterback three in all of football. Um, he was a top 12 in six of eight games. So that shows the ceiling, right? You can stream Kirk Cousins when you get it right. And he has dynamic pass-catching weapons. But um, I don't know if, you know, he still finished at 18. Did he? Yeah. Oh, no, he didn't finish no, at 18. No, no, no. He's I'm being sorry. drafted as, as He's 18. being drafted at 18 this year. Um, but he certainly didn't finish as a top 12 Take, quarterback last year. Yeah, or you mean uh, quarterback 11? Is that where he was? Yeah. <laughs> he looked – Kirk Cousins – Two, uh, I think two of the last three years has supported two top 12 wide receivers. Like, so he's at 6.8 touchdown percentage last year, which was uh, the highest of his career. It, well, yeah, definitely the highest of his career. He is more of a efficient uh, type of a quarterback, a low volume. And what you saw you know, in 2019 was that the volume was simply too low. 444 attempts. Uh, that he That was it. Like that's so low for a starting quarterback, especially when you're talking about fantasy purposes. Now they were they had to let it rip more this past year because the defense was so bad. The defense is going to be improved. Kurt, I'm with you, Andy. That I'm not drafting. I mean, I have him. I have him projected right on that fringe as a as a top twelve guy, but he's far more suited for. If you, if you had Cousins as your number two guy in a super flex league, I'm very happy about that. Oh, it's and, very solid. And, and you can probably wait uh, a little bit on that, but you're not taking him as a one despite all the weapons around well, him. Well, it does remind me a little of the old Big Ben debates, okay? Because Big Ben, Kirk Cousins, they're not running the ball, right? They're, right. They're, they're passers. Sometimes you have, even Matt Ryan, sometimes you have the higher touchdown total year. He had a couple of number five finishes in Washington. Last year, he battles into the top 12 at 11. Has big time weeks. But for some reason, you know, you just don't know when that fluctuation is necessarily going to happen. I kind of buy into the the narrative that Jason's brought up a lot this offseason. Last year was a very weird Mike Zimmer defensive year, right? They were awful. They were the, uh, you know, they spent $41 million in guaranteed money to fix the defense so that Zimmer doesn't have a heart attack watching what they did last year where they were 29th in points against. Here are some of the points given up by the Minnesota Vikings oh last boy. year. 43, 40, 31, 31, 33, 52, 35. Like, these are not numbers right. that we have ever seen from a Mike Zimmer defense. And you're right, Andy. You, I mean, you paid a lot of money. You went out and, you know, you, you talk about teams like watch their transactions, you know, the money where their mouth is thing. They are at least attempting to massively fix the defense that was horrific last year, which is what scares me for uh, – Justin Jefferson taking another step forward into, you know, fantasy statistic glory or Kirk Cousins repeating the the high passing attempt number over the year prior. I think this is a team that prefers to run the ball and was not able to as much last year because they're giving up 30 plus points on the reg. An interesting observation for, on Kirk Cousins, Andy, you were saying he he doesn't run, which is absolutely true. But he did have some really high-level fantasy finishes in Washington. And touchdowns? Had a rushing touchdowns. I remember he had those he couple had, weird years. He had years. three straight years of four or more rushing touchdowns. And Didn't have Dalvin Cook in Washington. <laughs> and a like statistically the real big difference between Washington and his Minnesota time, <laughs> like the, the most glaring difference is those rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and last year he had 35-plus passing touchdowns. It was the lowest fantasy finish ever for a quarterback to have that, QB 11. So things have to go perfectly right for him to be outside the top 10. That's where I'm starting to just pump the brakes. Yep. Dalvin Cook is being drafted number two overall everywhere. 312 carries, 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns last year with another 44 catches, 
and a touchdown through the air. High floor. That's what Dalvin Cook gives you. Only two games outside the top 24, but still a huge ceiling. I mean, he yeah. he won you weeks, uh, except for when Irv Smith stole his touchdowns at the oh, end of the year. Irv. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dalvin Cook should be drafted number two. The only argument you could make against that is just health and the fact that he's dealt with a lot of different injuries. He's had a couple of major catastrophic knee injuries. He's got a shoulder injury that has a high rate, uh, historically, statistically speaking, of being re-aggravated again at some point in the career. So if you wanted to avoid injury risk there, that's the only reason to not take Dalvin Cook at two, and everybody can get injured. So I'm not I'm not pivoting off of him as my number two. Justin Jefferson's going in the third round. He's the wide receiver eight off the board. Um, that doesn't seem too expensive for me. Uh, you know, the, the 1,400 plus yards last year. It's not statistically likely that he, he's able to come out and repeat that. No. But I also saw a player that was, you know, worked into the lineup, right? That number was reflective of still starting the year with very few snaps. The, yep. the first two weeks, he was not a, a big part of anything that the Vikings were doing. It wasn't until week three where he really got involved. So factoring that in, I mean, he was just that was a 1,600-yard pace. So if he drops down to 1,400 this year. Yeah, he, he was truly amazing. I don't have a problem with drafting him as the wide receiver eight. I've got him right now as my wide receiver nine. Um, so he, he's, he's about that range. And, of course, while I expect him to be worse this season fantasy-wise than he was his rookie season, um, which is not the normal trajectory, but normal doesn't count when you have the greatest rookie wide receiver season of all time, there is still the world where he just gets better and you have you have upside baked into going into his second year where you say maybe we just still amazingly haven't seen the best of him yet. Well, you know Kirk throws a great deep ball. You know Justin Jefferson was the best at that during the year, and he only scored – in three of the last 10 games of the season. So I what think, a loser. I think that's the area where he could improve even if the yardage doesn't stay high. Thielen's going in the fifth round, middle of the fifth. Are you drafting Adam Thielen there? Man, I went into this offseason like, look, Thielen's still great. He's going to be amazing because watching film last year, he looked amazing. You could not stop him at the goal line. I have seen absolutely nothing to say Adam Thielen has slowed down, and I can't get myself to pull the trigger on him Ooh. when I'm staring at him in a draft because it's just like you don't want to be holding the bag at the age 31 cusp, and you're like, it's a run first team. Jefferson's the one now. Is this going to be the time where the touchdowns don't come and you're just really disappointed? That's Mike, how I feel. Mike, would you rather run out Robert Woods or Thielen as your RB or your wide receiver too? I, I would go with Robert Woods. I would. I am. Well. I'm very concerned for Adam Thielen's upside this year. He, I think yeah, he'll the be upside. I think I, that's a good way to say it. I think he'll be fine. And it's drafters are being savvy about it. The you know. The when when Adam Thielen was at the heights, he was not going as a, the wide receiver twenty one. But it's you know seeing him get up back up to the top. I don't see it there. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, the, the Adam Thielen you used to have was one that had a floor that was higher than the one we saw last year. You know, you had five times outside the top forty over the last half of the year. Two catches, three catches, three catches, two catches. That wasn't something that you ever saw from Adam Thielen. In days gone by. Adam Thielen has been a top 10 wide receiver three times in the last four years, including this past season. But he, see, -E -S -S -E -C -T. If you can, see if you can spot the difference in how they came. One of the times he had 91 receptions. One of the times he had 113 receptions. And last year he had 74 yeah. receptions. It is, it, is, it is dicey. Yeah, Irv Smith. We've talked about it. He's currently being drafted as the tight end 12. I think... The world is higher on Irv Smith than the three of us are. They are. Yeah, they are. They are. But it, this is one of those whatever. Tight end 12. Kirk Cousins could be 30-plus touchdowns again. And so Irv Smith, can he break into the top six? Absolutely. Absolutely he top can. Top three? Uh, no. No. No, uh, th this is still a team that's going to run the ball a lot. It's just touchdowns. Kyle Rudolph is gone, which is great for the opportunity for Irv Smith to take that leap forward. He certainly projects as someone who could – do that um so i'm fine if you want to take your shot on Irv smith he's just not the guy i have been taking my shot on okay the lions were five and 11 last year what do you think their win total is at going into the season four and a half <laughs> you're probably right i mean five I if four and a half all right, right there you go yeah um yeah, i didn't hate it 
They were five and eleven last year, but they started three and three. Yeah, but they are. They're not the same team. They're also curling, you know, one hundred and ten pound dumbbells. Oh, right now with Dan Campbell. Yeah, he's got oh, him going. Oh, guns, Mahoney. It's it's actually incredible. Everything that you mentally picture about what the who the Lions are, just erase it from your brain. This is it might as well be an expansion team from Detroit because Stafford, Galladay, Marvin Jones, Almondola, Peterson, Carry On, all gone. The new Lions is Jared Goff, Tyrell Williams, Brashad Perryman, Jamal Williams, Darren Fells. Uh, this is the NFC Texans, at, at mm -hmm. least on paper, yeah, right? like a, from a roster standpoint. It's a two-team race for the number one pick. It sure it feels that way. Although I will give, like, I think the Lions are going to fight their way to some wins that we don't see coming. I mean, it happens every year in the NFL with certain teams. Um, you know, we just talked about what. Uh, Chicago knocking off Tampa Bay on Thursday night and things like that. I think the Lions are going to fight tooth and nail. Dan Campbell biting kneecaps. Anthony Lynn leading that offense and Swift and Williams. I, I don't know. I would probably take the over. Does that shock you? Well, no. They set the line at a place where you're, you're, you're questioning. I mean, five wins is not a super high bar to get to, especially in a 17 uh week season but i i understand what you're saying this is a team that is literally trying to build themselves about grit about um mental toughness and and being the more testosterone filled team and from week to week that that can work from from week to week the problem is they don't have a ton of talent and that's at the end of the day that's really what's going to be what wins games yeah, I mean, I feel like if you had a defense you could hang your hat on, these offensive players could piece together some wins. But being 32nd in points against, in the rebuild mode, new head coach, new coordinator, that does seem challenging. I didn't know this. Since 1957, no hired Lions head coach has ever gotten another head coaching job after leaving the Lions. What? So that is, um, I mean, Guns Mahoney had to make a decision here. Get, get your one head coaching job? I don't know if he knows that stat. <laughs> <laughs> he might not. So uh, they've lost their – I mean, the best quarterback they've ever had is gone. 60% um, of the running back touches last year, gone. 90% of their targets. I mean, Quintez Cephas is the only wide receiver on the roster remaining from last year, and he had 35 targets for them. So, you know, this is all brand new. We do you, – Jason, you brought it up the other day. Jared Goff has – you know, we kind of have a tendency to make light of Jared Goff's situation because he went to Detroit. He he wasn't the answer in Los Angeles, but he still provided fantasy value with Sean McVay. Yes, uh, to a number of of pass catchers in years past. So obviously, we've been big fans of Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, led by Jared Goff. The question really becomes: Was it led by Jared Goff or was it led by Sean McVay? Again, at the end of the day, the talent on the field is what's getting it done. So you've got to give Jared Goff his credit. He is not a bad. Oh, group. introducing Jared Goff. Uh, but Jared Goff. That doesn't help me take him more seriously at all. Uh, he he can get the job done. The problem is he doesn't have Robert Woods. He doesn't have Cooper Cup, um, and he doesn't have Sean McVay. So uh, I, I this is why I like Swift as my running back fourteen because I think the the dump offs will have to come and I like TJ Hawkinson to really level up like TJ Hawkinson is going to be a solid tight end this season I think he leads this team in targets I think he is the best pass catching option on the roster I don't know you that, think that he leads the team in targets I think he leads the team in targets yes because Tyrell Williams uh, Brashad Perriman uh, the hodgepodge, Amon Ross, St. Brown, the hodgepodge like you're, of wide You're receiver talking corner. about then like 90 plus targets. You're, I mean, oh, yeah. You know what? If you're leading a team, then you. 115 was his pace for the first 14 weeks last year with Stafford, with Marvin, with Kenny G, although injured. I, I but he have, was on 115 target pace through 14 games. I have Hawkinson down for 135 targets. That's why when, oh, when, we, talk about the, when we talk about the breakout, the problem All is. Right. Will he get the touchdowns to uh, really level all the Difference way up to make, that yeah. next tier? And I don't think he will, but again, I think he's a solid option, a really good player this year. 
Um, I have a I have a difficulty drafting him at you know if he's going in the fifth round. There's really really good wide receivers there, and if he doesn't get the touchdowns to follow the targets, uh, I'd just I'd rather stream the position and have depth at wide receiver. It's just a game strategy. It's not nothing against T.J. Hawkinson, but I I do I think he. I would be surprised if he doesn't lead the team in targets. All, all the big tight ends, Kelsey, Waller, Andrews, Kittle, were all in that 25, 24-25% target share number. Last year, Hawkinson was at 18. So if you think he's going to make the jump forward, um, look, a bet on the Lions is a tough bet for me to make in general, uh, but I can see it. I see the path because I don't know how to tell you which of these wide receivers to put your, you know, to bank on because somebody's going to have value. Mm -hmm. This is the NFL, right? Like, there's somebody that's going to step forward on the field. I've and seen Jared Goff is not Jared Goff is not a bum, right? He, like, he, there where are, you have to stop him from passing at all. Well, I'm saying that there are teams out there where the quarterback play is just like, like last year's Jets. I guess even Jamison Crowder had a couple games here or there, but sure. but if there's if the quarterback is garbage, then there may not be value on the team. But Jared Goff is an okay, competent quarterback. So I, I'm with you that I think there is, there will be value to extract somewhere. I just the, I need my I need the telescope. Yeah, to I, find I, it. I agree with you, and and that makes me actually circle back to Andy. You saying you you you'd take the over on the four and a half, and I actually I, I kind of agree because I think that's probably about what the Texans are. And if I look at the quarterback situation there, which is the most important position on the field, Jared Goff is miles and worlds and yards and all sorts of distance different, metrics different. <laughs> better than uh, Tyra Taylor. Is several tutus better? Oh, yeah. If you lay him down, like how tall he is? Well, did you see that they're they're going to try and modify the tutu? That's right. They are looking to add weight on the tutu. Now, he remember, just went on the COVID list today. But Oh, that's not going to help him put on the weight. <laughs> no. But do remember that no, water, uh, no matter what he gains, he still remains on one tutu. One tutu. Yeah. Right. So Which, if you're if you're heavier and you're trying to be uh, fewer tutus, right. this might be great news for you. <laughs> oh, if, this uh, is, yeah, if you don't yeah. care about the change of weight and you just want the tutu number, <laughs> Look, the um, baseline is changing. Brashad Perryman, Tyrell Williams, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Quintez Cephas. That's the wide receiver room. Um, vacated targets, yeah, all of them, pretty much. <laughs> Perryman to me looked. At, I mean, look, I haven't seen him on Ross, St. Brown at the NFL level. Tyrell to me is looks done. Um, Cephas I thought was okay, but Perryman has actually impressed me at the NFL level in recent years. So when you look at all of those things considered, I like Perryman the most. Now a Detroit beat writer came out and said if I were a betting man, I'd take Amon Ross St. Brown and a healthy Tyrell. So maybe Tyrell was just too hurt, but I don't know if he can stay. Well, Tyrell was did not play all of 2020 like yeah he, and he he's did, he'll be yeah, 30 he this year he opted out for COVID and, and was actually good the last time that we we saw him for the Raiders so I I do think he that he opted he's, out for COVID yeah right Is wasn't that, I, I don't that's believe, how I, I don't think so oh, I think, it was I, think an injury. He was, I thought he was like one of the absolute first guys to opt out maybe I, re, I am misremembering that we will vet that but I thought he opted out for COVID no they placed him on season ending injury reserve on September 1st of last year uh, torn, torn labrum, labrum in his shoulder oh. was trying to play through it after rehabbing. You might be thinking Damian Williams, Jason. Yeah, oh, I Damian remember Damian Williams. Williams. No. Oh, okay. Um, but I like I like you trying to bail me out. Well, Williams, uh, Williams, Williams, Williams. Yeah, that's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, yeah. But so, but Perryman, uh, Perryman had that that moment in time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that was great. And was, Joe Flacco. It was. He had some weeks with Joe it was Flacco. Very fun, and he. Uh, maybe. Uh, Didn't he have some weeks with Joe? He he. Week nine last year against New England, he was five for one hundred one with two touchdowns. Uh, but he also he dealt with his own injury problems. He had a, an ankle problem this past yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, but, ugh, ugh. But all right, really, pass. not much. So pass. <laughs> Would you rather maybe the rookie is where you go? Yeah. Would you rather take a shot on one of these guys with a better quarterback? If you're talking the bad teams, or with Brandon Cooks with a worse quarterback? Brandon, Brandon Cooks. Cooks. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And maybe even one other Texan above these four. I don't know. <laughs> All right, anything else with the Lions that you want to talk about? I don't think so. Who you got winning the division? The Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, do you, no, Jamal the, Williams, can you? Is he going to be flexible this year? I, d I do think so. I think no, no, they're just like could he stretch? A lot of, a lot of yeah, yoga. Can he do a lot of? 
Yeah, I, th I think he can do downward dog just fine. <laughs> um, but I would, I would, uh, I would say he's going to be involved enough to be a flex option, and that that will make us very, very upset. I was going to say, is it managers. just going to make you angry if you're a Swift manager? Yeah. Uh, division winner, we all have the Packers. Yes. Yeah, I will take the Packers. <sighs> you know what? Man, it's still I, I really like Minnesota. I really, really do. I got the Packers. All right, toughest player to project in the entire division. Um, I mean, DeAndre Swift is very difficult. Yeah, I, I say David Montgomery. I, I just keep going okay. back and forth on whether he's going to be very, very good. I'll spend or... my summer trying to convince you. Yeah, you, you need to. He, he's he's my tough one. Yeah, and then just... I'll say Tunyon because uh, sure. there's no reason he can't do it again or have an increased workload. And I don't want to just discount him on on that front. You know, he was important, earned the trust of Rodgers over the year, and that trust can go a long way. And then uh, sneaky player, da I Damian Williams. Really? Yeah. Um, I I am going to throw out um, Brashad Perriman uh, because I you know I believe the reports right now of um, Tyrell being the one, but Perriman is decently talented and all alone. I'll say Mooney for the sneaky player. Yeah, yeah, that's and good. then uh, who has the highest testosterone in the division? Oh, the Lions for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's we hadn't asked that about other divisions. I that don't know why our, we left that, that off bad. there, Brooks. It's our fault. It's our fault. Um, okay, I think that wraps it up. We do want to thank the sponsors of today's show. Look, the sponsors support what we're doing here five mm -hmm. days a week and uh, all the episodes and live content and and stuff that we do here. Um, we want to thank Traeger Grills. Oh yeah, baby! We got that brand new segment earlier. Um, Dude, look, we are all absolutely in love with Traeger. Have been for years, and I. Jason has more than one trigger grill. He, I do. The, I would. I have never looked in the mirror and thought, "I'm looking at it." That's a griller right there. No, I've I've never thought that about myself, and then got. But the, you are got the trigger. I'm, I'm it's working just so my easy. I'm working my way up there, but that's what it is, man. I have never, up until the, I got the trigger, I had my chicken cooking skills were yeah, a, a zero. A tr well, I could burn it. <laughs> like, okay I could, okay i could burn the crap out of it and i'm like i don't know i don't know if it's ready yet and the traeger makes it just so it's wonderful you sit inside with the, with the yes. little meat thermometer and you, you got go, the wi-fi on there yeah and you you just get alerted your chicken's perfect i i, I could not be a bigger fan of traeger make I, sure you know, i like the pellet i like the pellet game where i can mix yeah. and match pellets that i like the taste of yeah the absolutely. flavor get some cherry wood in there but um if, if you're gonna check them out Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. You got it. That's the link to visit. And then, of course, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show as well. Check them out. Um, you can use our code BALLERS. If you're looking for an autographed piece of gear, you always see them up on our wall. Uh, but you can check them out at pristineauction.com. And like I said, use the code BALLERS. They'll give you $10. Our Adams jersey lives for another day. Yeah, there were some more rumors that he may be open to an extension now. On the was, team. Was that before no, the after, one year? No, after they figured out that Rodgers would be back, that, you know, they – I don't know if he was uh, it was a stone wall or something. I don't know if they were working together in cahoots. But uh, I'm going to go stare at my dynasty roster at these running backs, and uh, we'll call that a day. Foot Clan, we love you. Thanks for supporting the show. I got, Actually, I'm going to go on a little trip. Does that sound all right? It sounds great to me. Be back soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.